Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. If you have your Bibles, I'd invite you at this time to turn to the book of Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. So, as you know, we've been talking for the last few weeks about what it looks like to build our lives on Jesus and to pursue the good of our community. And really, today kicks off our impact week. And we have a lot of stuff that, that, that's going to be going on with Impact Week. So I want to encourage you to sign up to um, volunteer this next week somehow. And then also remember, next Sunday, rather than being here in worship, we love our church building, but our church is not a building, right? Our church is a body of believers gathered together. And so we're going to gather together out at Redemption Ranch. Now, there's a whole lot of information for you as we're going out there uh, to meet. And so there's two ways that you can access that information. So you can have all your questions answered, hopefully, okay? You can go onto our app. And on our app, under the events, there's going to be all the information that you need about Redemption Ranch. Also, um, if you don't have a smartphone or don't um, want to access it that way, we do have handouts like this that explain everything that's going on with our Impact Week celebration, including a map of Redemption Ranch. You can pull in, you can park there in the parking lot, then we'll have our church shuttles running to take people from the parking lot over to the area where the amphitheater where we'll be having worship and the pavilion where we'll be having lunch. We'll have lots of different activities. And so make sure um, you look at that information either on online, on our app, or you can pick up one of these forms to hopefully answer any of your questions. And if you have any other questions after looking over that form, uh, you can talk to Andrew about it, all right? <laughs> He'd love to field your phone calls this week, I'm sure. But in all seriousness, we want to make sure that we have enough food for everybody. So we're really encouraging you to sign up today so we know how much food um, to have. And so what I want to encourage you guys to do is sign up for that. And still, if you don't get signed up today, you find, please come out there um, next week anyways. But we want to guarantee that we have enough food. So sign up by today so we can have all of that taken care of. And it's going to be a whole lot of fun. And as you saw, I think Andrew loves swimming in that lake. So we're going to have a great time next week celebrating what God is doing. You know, we've just really been um, convicted that, you know, these last 18 months, we haven't had a lot of time to fellowship. We haven't had a lot of time just to celebrate different ways that God is working. So we want to be a people marked by joy, right? And part of that joy is that we're going to get together and we are going uh, to fellowship with one another. Now, really, as we've been talking about building and pursuing, one of the things of building our lives on Jesus is having true um, biblical fellowship and biblical community. Another way that we build our lives on Jesus um, is through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. So if you're here with us in person, you can drop off your tithe or offering in different boxes as you're exiting the sanctuary this morning. If you're joining us online, you can give online through our app or through our website, or you can mail in your tithe or offering. Just another way that we build our lives on Jesus is through giving. And I hope you've made it now to Matthew chapter 5. You know, we've been examining the early church and really looking at Acts 2, and we'll be getting back into Acts 2 in the subsequent weeks. But I really, as we're starting off with Impact Week this morning, um, I think that this passage here in Matthew 5 is so incredibly appropriate as we think about impact. Because as Christians, we are never meant to live inside a bubble where we distance ourselves from the world and say, we don't want any part of that. Rather, we are called to be God's ambassadors and his witnesses, and we are to represent God well to the world around us. We are to be his hands and his feet. And that's what we're looking at. As you turn to Matthew chapter 5, I just want to give you a quick background. This is really in the middle of what is arguably Jesus' most famous sermon, the Sermon on the Mount. 
And he starts chapter 5 by telling us as Christians how we should live. Jesus says that we should be different than the world. We should be poor in spirit. We should be mournful and meek. We should be thirsting for righteousness. We should be merciful and pure in heart. We should be peacemakers. And even though we're all of those things, we don't go crawl off and hide in a monastery somewhere. We go out into the world and live in a way that's different so we can point people to Jesus. And after he goes through these beatitudes as he starts off this sermon on the mount, the final uh, verses really are transitional in verses 10 through 12. In verses 10 through 12, we really see the attitude of the world towards the believer. And then in verses 13 through 16, where we really dive in this morning, we see the believer's attitude towards the world. So this might surprise you, it might shock you, but the world is not always going to respond positively to Christians. Did you know that? That's shocking, right? Okay, good. So we're all on the same page. As Jesus tells us this, we're like, okay, that's all right. But guess what he also says? No matter how the world treats us, we are to be salt and light to the world. The world might persecute the church but it still desperately needs the truth that the church has to offer, right? The world is dependent on the church going out and being the hands and feet of Jesus, of being and sharing the gospel. So with that being in mind, I'd ask for you to please stand in honor of the reading of God's word uh, this morning. My friend Hannah is going to read for us from Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt should lose its taste, how can it be made salty? It's no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled on by men. You are the light of the world, a city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand and gives light for all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men so that they may see your good works and glory to your Father in heaven. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. God, we love you. We're so thankful for your word. I'm so thankful for students like Hannah who are being your salt and light uh, to the next generation. God, we pray that for the next few moments, Lord, that you would turn our heart's affection and our mind's attention to, to, to you and your word. God, I pray you'd hide me behind your cross, behind any of my own wisdom from my mouth, but God, and said that your spirit would speak to us through your word this morning. God, let our church be a church that gives salt and light to the world. We love you, Lord. It's in your son's name we pray. And all God's people said? Amen. Amen. Jesus says, no matter how the world responds to us, we should be salt and light to the world. And you know what? The church is Jesus' plan A for evangelizing the world, and he doesn't have a plan B. He says, we are the salt, and if we lose our saltiness, that's the problem. We are the light. If we hide that light under a bushel, there's no alternative. What is Jesus saying here in this very famous sermon. He is very simply saying that we need to stand out, right? We need to stand out. Now, my family, we like to watch a a few different shows together. One of those shows is America's Got Talent. Have you guys seen that show at all? Maybe a few of you. So America's Got Talent, they get these people together, they put them on stage, and really, you know, there are thousands of people and groups that audition for this television show. But there are only two groups of people that get screen time on AGT. That's exactly right. You're either really good and incredibly talented, or you are incredibly terrible. (laughs) There's no middle ground when it comes to screen time. You're never like, oh, that person is 
They're all right. They're all right. No, it would be like you've got Zach singing opera on this side, right? I really think I can make AGT, but not for the positive side of things, right? <laughs> but then on this side over here, I don't know if you saw this last season, uh, there was this individual, her, her, um, her stage name was Night Birdie, young lady battling cancer, terminal cancer, but a follower of Jesus, went to Liberty University, and was able to share an original song, kind of about her own experience and her own journey. Powerful. Got to see her represent Jesus well on this show, watched by millions of people. But when I think about as Christians are portrayed in the news, oftentimes We see people talk about the hypocrisy of Christians, right? Oftentimes we see people cherry pick all the bad things that people can point out, right? But there are times when we see that Christians like Night Birdie are able to shine a light because they are living positively for the Lord. Yeah, I'm reminded even now of how our Southern Baptist disaster relief program has a reputation that when disasters strike in our country, people say that Southern Baptists are the first on the scene to respond to those disasters. And that's incredible. And that's what we want to do. We want to stand out. And that's the whole point of this message that Jesus gives us, is he challenges us to stand out. But he says, if you're gonna stand out, I want you to stand out in a positive way. And he starts off, he gives all these beatitudes, and he says, you'll be blessed when you live this way. He says, look at all these blessings that we get when we're poor in spirit, when we mourn, when we in... uh, when we hunger and thirst for righteousness. He says, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed. But then he makes this connection. He says, with these great blessings that you get in the beginning of his message, in these beatitudes, he says, now you also have great responsibility. So you have great blessing, but you also have great responsibility. The Beatitudes give us a glimpse of some great things that God gives us. What does he give us? The kingdom of heaven. He gives us comfort. He gives us the earth as an inheritance. He allows us to be filled with righteousness. He gives us mercy. He says that when we're blessed that we can see God. He says that we can become a child of God. He says that we will have a great reward in heaven. A lot of great blessings, right? When we live for the Lord, there are a lot of great blessings. But along with all those blessings, we see that we have a responsibility as believers It says in verse 13, you are the salt of the earth. And in verse 14, you are the light of the world. Not you can be if you feel like it. Not every once in a while I want you to be salt and light. No, he says you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. We are called to live as salt and light. We're called to live as salt and light. So what does it mean to be salt? We're talking about being salt this morning. Here's something, I don't know if you knew this or not. But salt was incredibly important throughout history. Did you know that? Salt was incredibly important throughout history. Greeks called salt theon. They called salt divine. That's how much of an importance they put to salt. Romans, they said that nothing was more valuable than sun and salt. The Romans said nothing is more valuable than sun and salt. Think about it. In a day without refrigeration... 
the only way that they could preserve meat was to do what? To salt it. They'd rub that salt in. So they'd travel across the sea, keep all this jerky in big barrels, soaked in brine, or just salted, left hard and stiff. How many of you guys like beef jerky? Yeah, I could, I could handle that one aspect of living in the world, Roman world, eating a lot of beef jerky. <laughs> Salt was a preservative. You know, also, it was used to pay soldiers. Have you ever heard that expression, you're not worth your salt? That comes from the fact that Romans would pay soldiers with salt. Salt was used throughout ancient history as a sign of friendship. There were salt covenants. And even now, you know, if you see that a worse enemy comes and eats with you and shares salt with you, in many places in the Middle East, you'd be obligated to care for that enemy like they're your great friend. It was used to bind covenants. Even now today, we kind of carry that tradition all over. Sometimes you like throw salt over your shoulder, right? Again, hearkening back to these old days. So salt was used to pay soldiers. It was used to reserve food. It was used to bind covenants. Bind friendships. Salt's a big deal in the ancient Near East. And it's still a big deal today. Now, I'm sure some of you are wondering what this, what I have this for, right? Yeah? So, it is Sunday, so you know you can't get the Lord's chicken today, right? But, I just wanted to pull out some of these, all right? Now, how many of you enjoy Chick-fil-A waffle fries? Yes? Yes? My daughter, this is her favorite thing. All right, she loves French fries, but she wants French fries from Chick-fil-A because they are better. And so, now there are many ways to eat fries, but what is oftentimes a really good thing to put on those French fries? Salt. Well, I, I just wanna, I want you to know, like, I enjoy a little bit of salt on my French fries, but my wife takes things to the extreme. Now I asked her permission to share this story, okay? But what she'll do is she will, lay out a napkin, okay, and then she takes salt, and she salts her napkin, okay? And then after she salts her napkin, she will take this wonderful, delicious Chick-fil-A fry, and she will dab it on one side and flip it over and dab it on the other. And then she eats it because she wants just the right amount of salt on either side. Yeah, it's interesting. Now, we all know, like, pray for my wife's salvation because we all know there's one true way to eat fries from Chick-fil-A, right? It's with this. I don't need salt. I need manna from heaven, right? The Chick-fil-A sauce. But she'll do that. She salts her napkin, puts it all out, and then dabs each individual fry. She loves salt that much. My wife loves salt. But you know what? If you eat a lot of salt, what happens? Yet, oh, you die. Wow, we got real dark. <laughs> I was going to go with we get, we get thirsty. <laughs> I see that we get thirsty. So my wife not only eats a lot of salt, she also drinks a lot of water. But if we see with salt, there's two main purposes, I believe, for salt in this world. We want to make life taste better to others. We want to make life taste better to others. And, you know, serving them makes their lives better, right? And then in turn, we make them thirsty. Thirsty for what? Living water. When Jesus encountered the woman at the well, he told her that he could offer her living water so she would never thirst again. So Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. Man, you should add some flavor to this world. You should make this world better. 
But he says this, but if the salt should lose its taste, how can it be made salty? It's no longer good for anything good to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You know, you can go out to the Dead Sea. I've never done this. And you can lay flat on your back and you just bob in the Dead Sea. Man, it's got this, it, it's this incredible repository for salt. But that salt of the Dead Sea is mixed a little bit with something called gypsum. Since it's mixed with this gypsum, the salt loses its ability to be salty and it's not good for anything anymore. It becomes stale and so people just toss it out on the road. Okay, you couldn't throw salt out into a field because you don't want to kill your crops. So you just toss it out on the road. When we start living like the world, instead of living like Jesus, we lose our saltiness. And we lose that distinct difference from the world. We need to understand, just like salt, when it interacts with gypsum, it is ruined. When we interact with the world and fall into sin and ungodliness, our reputations can be ruined. So we want to guard our reputation and we want to guard our character so we don't lose our effectiveness by looking too much like the world. We want to taste better to the world. We want to get people thirsty for living water. And so Jesus is telling us and challenging us, be in the world, but not of the world, right? We're to be in the world, but we're supposed to be distinctly different from the world. And then he continues on. He says, not only are we to be salt, but he says, you are the light of the world. A city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. You know, light is pretty important, isn't it? Light's pretty important. I told you last week about I have my good friend, uh, Micah, who uh, is a pastor at a church in New Orleans and how they are completely without power. So he was telling me last week how when, just imagine being in a city, hundreds of thousands of people and there's no power. And he said, what happened is now he's noticing people start first, he's like, everybody, you kind of get to your house when you can at night because it gets dangerous because people are walking around with flashlights. He says, and they're walking around with guns. That's just what's, that's what's happening. They're walking around with flashlights and with guns. He was telling me how he was having to just stay up and he was sitting by his door with a shotgun because he was hearing all this stuff going out and around him. And he was just like, I really wanted street lights at that moment. I mean, they're setting up, it, it, it's incredible that with, with different partnerships, they're, they're setting up a, 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 a center at their church where they can give out supplies and food for other people that are in need, but they're having National Guard assigned to their church. Because when we don't have that light shining, man, that's when danger comes, right? That's when we see People go to take advantage of some of those situations. We all know the function of light, right? We all know the function of light, to, to shine into the darkness, to help us see. It says, no one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand, and it gives light for all who are in the house. So think about times when light has shined really brightly. And I go right to Calvary. Right to Calvary. Jesus, who was willing to take the punishment for your sins and mine, who went to the cross and was willing to sacrifice himself to pay the penalty for our sins. There's a 
There's a band that I enjoy, it's called Austin Stone, and they have this song, and it says that your love shines on Calvary. I love that, your love shines on Calvary. Jesus' love really did shine brightly on Calvary, didn't it? You talk about Jesus being the light of the world when he went to the cross and was willing to pay the penalty for our sins. His love shone on Calvary. And I want you to know this morning, if you've never made that decision to put your trust in Christ, know that God loved you so much that he sent his son to die on the cross for your sins and for mine. Because we see this idea of a light, how important it is. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand, it gives light for all who are in the house. So think about the function of a lighthouse, right? Why, do, why are lighthouses so important? They shine light out for ships so ships won't come crashing into the shore so they can arrive home safely. And you have to think, right here, right now, God has placed our church here for a reason, right? He's placed us right here where we are for a reason, and our church needs to be a lighthouse in our community. There are so many people around us who are stumbling in the darkness and need to see the light of Jesus. I just think about what it means for us to exemplify being light in our community, exemplify that type of service. And you all can know what we had um, the opportunity to commemorate yesterday, right? 20 years since 9-11. And you can think about 9-11, you can think about where you were at the time. I remember I was in my journalism class, I was a senior in high school. And we turned on the TV in there and we're trying to figure out what happened. As we think about 9-11, you think about just different images. One of the big things is you had first responders who were willing to go into the mess, into the, the fact these These planes hit these buildings. Who knows when they're going to come down? And first responders willingly went in and risked everything to save others, right? When I think about that, I think about how we, as the church, have that same sort of responsibility, right? Of going into the mess, of being a lighthouse, of shining the love of Jesus, of putting others higher than ourselves. It's the same way if you are showing up at work and you have a coworker who's laying out with a, with a wound, you're not just gonna walk by and say, have a great day, right? And keep on going. You're gonna try to assist them and help them because they are hurting. In a very real sense, that is our mission in the world, right? Man, the church is supposed to be a hospital, isn't it? So think about how we can shine in our community. Why are we doing this impact week this next week? Why are we doing that? Well, I think impact week is a great opportunity for us to shine in our community, isn't it? It's a great opportunity for us to shine in our community. Because look at what Jesus says. I think this is so important. He talks about after us being salt and us being light. Then he says this. In the same way, verse 16, let your light shine before others. Why? So that they may see your good works. And what do they do? And give glory to your Father in heaven. When we live selflessly for the Lord, when we say we're going to be salt and light, when we're going to serve others rather than being served, what Jesus tells us is the outside lost world sees that and acknowledges there's something different about you. 
and it must be the God that you serve. As a church, God has been so gracious to us, hasn't he? He's allowed this church to be a light in this community for over 200 years. If we want to continue to, to grow in this community, we've got to pursue our community's good. We want to grow wider by serving the world around us. We really want to pursue the good of our community in such a way that they see our deeds and they glorify God. And people in our community notice. Uh, you know, I'm, I get to start tomorrow evening. Uh, just a couple weeks ago, I was invited to serve on Bridgeton's Police Commission. Don't ask me exactly what that means. I'm not sure yet. I have my first meeting tomorrow night. I'll let you know. But the mayor called me and he just said, I know your church cares about Bridgeton. And he acknowledged our past impact weeks and he also talked about our mobile market that we have every two weeks. He said, I wanna know if you're willing to serve on this commission. So I said, well, I don't really know exactly what that means. He's like, you can figure it out. So I said, all right. But I thought, what a testament to this church that one of the leaders in our community says, we know that you care about Bridgeton. And that's why we do what we do. Not so they can say, oh, well, that's a great church. No, so they can say, they serve a great God. That's why we do what we do. So that people will say, man, what is it that has changed your life so much? And we say, it's all about Jesus, right? It's not us. We're not a big deal. We're not awesome. But the God that we serve is incredible. And we want to be willing to do whatever it takes to serve the Lord. Now, I just want to challenge you this morning. I know we're in the midst of a pandemic. I know there's a lot of things going on, but I just want to challenge you. Would you agree to just say, I'll give at least one hour this next week to selflessly serve my community? We have so many different opportunities that you can sign up for, or you can do something on your own. Just let us know about it. What we just want to do is we just want to say, God, <laughs> We want to live for you, and we want to shine your light in our community. We want people to know that this church cares, that this church is a hospital for the hurting. We want to serve others so that we can then go around, and when they ask us, why are you doing this? You know what we get to do? We get to share the truth of the gospel, the people who desperately need it. Our church has gone through a rough stretch with a lot of loss recently, haven't we? And I think that should be sobering to us. And it should remind us that we are not promised tomorrow. But we have the hope of the gospel that can change people's lives today. So I just want to let you know, if you are sitting out here and you've never made that decision to trust in Christ. God demonstrated his love for us when he went to the cross to pay the penalty for our sins. I'd love to talk with you about what it means to be a follower of Jesus. If you're joining us online, you can comment right now on our Facebook feed. Or you can send us an email to connect at fifibc.org and we can talk about what it means to be a follower of Jesus. If you're sitting out here this morning, you're joining us online, you've already made that decision to trust in him. I just want to challenge you. Just say, I am going to be salt and light in my community this week. I'm going to intentionally set aside some time. We have tons of different projects that you can sign up for here, or we can just go figure out something else to do. We want to encourage our Bible study classes, do something together, whatever it is. 
Just say, God, I want to be salt and light this week. I'm going to be intentional about making an impact in the community where you have placed me. Let's go to Lord in prayer this morning. God, we love you so much. We're thankful for your word. We're thankful, Lord, for the hope that you give us and how your son's light shines through Calvary. And God, I pray that we as a church would be your ambassadors, would be your witnesses, would be your hands and feet, that we would truly be salt and light to our community, to our world. Lord, let us represent you well. Lord, gain opportunities to share the truth of the gospel with the world that needs us. Thank you for sending your son. Thank you, God, for changing our lives. We love you, Lord. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. I ask for you to stand with me for a few moments. We're going to have a brief time of response. As I shared about what Christ did for us on the cross, if you've never made that decision, please come down. We'll talk with you. We'll pray with you. Maybe you seem to come down right now. The altar is open. You want to say, you know what? I need to just pray that I can be salt and light where God has placed me. Maybe you're excited about what God is doing here. If you want to join the church, whatever your decision, you can come down and pray with myself, with Gloria, with Andrew, as our worship team leads us this morning. Thank each and every one of you for coming and worshiping with us this morning. Um, I can be seated for one moment. I have a couple other things that I just wanted to share that I don't want to forget. One thing, too, that, and as we pray, if you all um, have undoubtedly heard by now, Wayne Gallagher passed away uh, last week, and we had the services uh, yesterday. But just please be in prayer for Carol and the girls. Uh, we just definitely want to pray for God's comfort um, for them. And so we'll be praying for them as, as we conclude our service. If you're a visitor or guest with us for the first time, I'd love to meet you in our welcome center. We have a free gift that we'd love to give to you. Or if you want to talk about, uh, with me about anything, about any questions you have about what it means to follow Jesus, we'd love to have the opportunity. And I can meet you in our welcome center right after the service. We'd love to talk with you about that. And, and finally, I just really want to encourage you um, to, to sign up, to sign up for Redemption Ranch next week, to sign up for um, uh, a, a, a way to serve this Impact Week. And I don't know if you saw the past couple weeks, maybe you've seen um, our staff has been wearing some new Fifi Baptist shirts. I don't know if you've noticed that. And so we want to show you guys that we're really serious about our church being on mission for the Lord. So here's the deal. If you sign up to do an Impact Week project, we have a shirt that we want to give you because we want you to wear that shirt while you're serving. Does that make sense? And again, hopefully you're serving. People will ask you, why are you doing this? And then I'll open up those opportunities. And so we have shirts available there in our um, uh, cafe annex area. And if you have signed up for Impact Week, and if you're going to serve this week with Impact Week, right after this service, you can go back there and you can pick up a shirt. We want everybody to have one because we want to 
again, shine the light of Jesus. And we want people to look at those things and say, why are there five people here all in the same shirt? And then that opens up opportunities, right? So we're really serious about being on mission and pursuing the good of our community. We're so serious. We have shirts for everybody who's willing to serve this next week. So I want to encourage you after this service, uh, before you head on to, to Sunday school, we'll have staff members back there who are ready to help uh, assist uh, giving out uh, some of those shirts to you. So if you're willing to serve at Impact Week, we want to uh, give you that gift of um, uh, a Fifi Build and Pursue shirt. So I wanted to make sure I was really clear on that. And again, our coffee uh, cafe is open again, so you can stop there and um, you will, any of the proceeds that will go to help support um, Afghan refugees this month. So it's just a couple things I want to bring, uh, make note of. Let me pray for us as we uh, conclude our service and uh, pray for uh, Carol and the girls. God, we love you so much. We're thankful, God, that you have called us to be salt and light. We're so thankful for the many blessings you give us, but God, we also want to take on that responsibility that you've given us to represent you well in this world. So we pray, God, that you would use Fifi Baptist Church in Bridgeton and in the greater St. Louis area, Lord, that we could represent you well, that we could shine our light so other people might see our good deeds and glorify you. So God, we pray right now, Lord, that you'd be with with Carol and the girls. We're thankful that Wayne is with you and that promise that we have of eternity. But Lord, your word says that we grieve with those who grieve. So we grieve with them right now. We're thank thankful though, Lord, that we grieve with hope because of your son, Jesus. So God, be with us now. Let us be salt and light in our community during Impact Week. We love you, Lord. In your son's name we pray, amen.